Hello, and welcome to Digital Marketing Musings, hosted by Merkel. Each episode, we choose a different expert to discuss the latest and greatest in digital marketing. Today, we're sitting down with Vanessa Cooper, Alessa Lisi, and Stacey Campbell to talk about holiday travel trends this year. I'm Gaia Reed, And I'm Andrea McCartney. And this is Digital Marketing Musings. Thanks for tuning in to Digital Marketing Musings. Today, we're joined by Vanessa Cooper, Alyssa Lisi, and Stacey Campbell, who are going to give us insight into 2021 holiday travel trends. Vanessa is a senior director at Merkle and brings more than 20 years of experience on the client side, leading e-commerce marketing efforts for a major U.S. airline, and on the agency side, partnering with digital clients in a variety of industries, including travel and hospitality. Alyssa is an SEO account manager at Merkel, where she's worked across a variety of clients in the hospitality and high-tech industry over the last three years. Stacy, whose extreme love of travel allowed her to mix business and pleasure, uh, works at Kimpton Hotels as the Senior Director of Digital Marketing. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. So, Vanessa and Alyssa... Uh, you all made an appearance on our show back in May of this year, talking about how COVID had impacted the, the travel vertical as a whole. Um, at that point, we were seeing a surge in vaccinations and anticipating a release in pent-up demand for travel over the summer. So how did that end up playing out over the summer? Yeah, so it's funny to look back a couple months on our initial predictions. Overall, I would say it ended up playing out pretty well. Um, the pent-up demand and increase in vaccinations definitely resulted in a, a busy travel over the summer, especially when looking at those 2020 levels. Um, throughout the summer, notably on some of the holidays such as Memorial Day and July 4th, we saw spikes in travel interests, searches, bookings, um, activities that often mirrored or were fairly close to those 2019 levels, which was was great to see those pre-COVID um, levels nearing that. Um, so recently I was actually looking at some research that SCIF provides. Um, they put together this recovery index, which takes a look at travel bookings, visits, searches, and revenue across a variety of brands and compares these to the 2019 levels. Um, and they score this out of 100, so 100 being what 2019 was. And looking in the United States in July, we actually saw that there was a 91 to over 100 recovery index, meaning that travel interest and activity was almost to a full recovery based on what we saw to pre-COVID. So um, July was a, in May and June were some good months for the travel industry. Um, however, did want to note that over the last month, so August, we have seen some fluctuations, as we know, um, and I'm sure we'll talk about more throughout this episode. Um, the Delta variant has had some impact on travel activity, as well as some other external factors unrelated to COVID, such as the hurricanes and tropical storms. And there's been a change, too, just in how kids are going back to school this year. Um, some have gone back earlier, some later, which have also impacted um, travel as a whole. And then, Stacey, I know that you had some insights on this topic. Didn't know if you wanted to add anything here. Yeah, of course. I think at Kimson Hotels, we saw very similar trends. The vaccination rates had travelers feeling much more confident in their travels. And you could certainly sense the need to get out, to just be out, to travel. Um, hotels across the board saw a very heavy, heavy drive market this summer. People ranging from families to couples to friends just getting out you would see people heading into major cities like San Francisco, for example, and then they would head out and do uh, drive market travel. For example, San Francisco then head to Yosemite National Park and then Lassen and then maybe even up to the Pacific Northwest. Um, so they were looking at big travel trips. Um, most of the hotels that were performing well were hotels that we had never seen perform well before. Um, think about hotels like Bozeman, Montana, Manchester, Vermont, even Sacramento and Omaha. It was really the ones off the beaten path where people felt like they weren't in the center of the city with a lot of people clamoring around. Um, so it was really kind of great to see those cities boom for the first time ever. Um, and then we saw like the typical destinations perform really well. Think of like the Key West um, and the Palm Springs where people could kind of lay out by the pool and be outside more than inside. Uh, and then I think the, the other thing that we really saw come back is people bringing their pets. They were on the road and they didn't want to leave them at home. Um, so we really saw that 
coming back when owners wanted to bring them. That's awesome. And just to uh, clarify the industry term, drive path travel, I'm assuming that's anywhere that you can actually drive or like road trip to. Yeah. And I would say we were seeing anywhere within like a 10 hour drive from oh, wow. where they were either flying into or where they were living. Okay. Wow. Cool. Um, I know most of my friends are like 10 hour drive. That's crazy. Why would you do that? I'm a, I'm an avid road tripper. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. that doesn't scare me at all, but I'm glad to see others getting out there and getting off the beaten path as well. Cool. Um, so Alyssa and Vanessa, when we last spoke, you had mentioned some trends uh, that we had predictions around sticking around, things like um, uh, road trips, sustainable and eco-friendly, flexible and booking, uh, secondary cities. Curious if those actually played out and if we're continuing to see those trends being sustainable into the fall and holiday seasons. I'll go ahead and kick that off if that's okay. Um, so all throughout the pandemic, I would say it's been a fine line for us to push travel and offer and deals for hotels. It's kind of like, of course, we want people to come to the hotels, but do we really want to be in the face when we understand what's going on in the world? Um, so the better way we felt like was to position the company and, you know, what is going on to make the travelers feel safe to come to your hotel or safe to fly. Um, so we talked about what are the policies that we're pu pushing? Are we flexible on our rates? Are we flexible on our cancellation policies? What are the protocols and cleanliness that we have in place and we want to let the customers know? So we're trying to be sensitive about that during the pandemic. Um, and those are definitely two of the most sensitive things for the customers during this time. It seemed to have fallen off a little bit. And when travel really boomed back uh, mid to late summer, they weren't really worried about that. And hotels were able to really push ADR um, and customers weren't so sensitive about that. And we started to see, you know, hotels were really skyrocketing in their rates, which was great for us. <laughs> um, and Stacey, we started quick question. Yeah. What is ADR? So ADR is basically what the hotels are selling. It means average daily rate, what the hotels are selling on any given night. Ah, yeah. Perfect. Um, but now we're starting to see some sensitivity again. It's with this new wave. People are hesitant about new waves coming back after Delta. Schools are going back in. Um, and, you know, we're starting to see a little bit more return of the normal of being, you know, a little cautious when it comes to spending money. Um and then the huge spike in secondary and tertiary cities, I don't ever imagine that going away. I think people are experiencing and discovering this new renewed sense of discovering places just an hour outside of where they live. And I wouldn't imagine that um, going away ever as expected. Um, but I know Alyssa has a lot more on the outdoor and road trips as well. Yeah, I know those are two big topics that we um, spoke about a little bit earlier and on our last episode, too. Um, so through the summer, um, those continue to peak. I know specifically to road trips. Um, I was reading an article earlier this week that said that 72% of adults are comfortable road tripping. And then it compares that to what um, customers and adults are feel comfortable with flying domestically. And that was at 36%. So a lot of Majority of adults are still comfortable with that road trip, even the first week of September, um, where, I mean, we've definitely seen improvements in the percentage of adults that are comfortable flying, but obviously road trips are still ruling in that sense. And then on that similar topic of the outdoor travels, um, a lot of those secondary cities align with some of what the outdoor trips are being close to national parks, such as Yellowstone and some other areas out west too. Um, I saw some article recently too that referenced that eight out of the 13 top trending destinations from the summer were near a national park or you know within an hour drive from it too. So definitely still seeing both outdoor and road trips that kind of go together at some points too, um, but definitely a trend I wouldn't imagine going away. Probably ever too. I think there's just been a, a new realization with the outdoors as well. Vanessa, I don't know if you had anything else to add to this question. Yeah, just to piggyback on that, you know, when we last got together, we were talking about how deeply important it was to people all over the world to reconnect with their friends and their family and really try and find ways to 
bring everyone together, and I don't mean on a Zoom call, I mean actually face-to-face. -face. Um, so there's still this overwhelming desire to see or even travel with friends and family. We're still seeing those travel bubbles um, come up in, in trends, and one of my favorite trends that is happening that is continuing to gain some steam is multi-generational travel. So grandparents getting the whole gang together and planning a trip, maybe even a bucket list trip, um, and lots of cases even footing the bill for the whole crew, um, which is really, really nice. And they're planning it early too. We've seen, compared to 2019, so pre-pandemic, we've seen uh, that Christmas flight bookings are up 17%. Wow. And Thanksgiving flight bookings are up 9%. Wow. So, you know, it's, it's really, really amazing. I think there's, you know, there's not a whole lot you can put out there that's going to keep people's wings clipped this year um, because they just want to see, see people face to face. I'm so impressed by those travel numbers and bookings for flights. Like, I'm, I'm kind of shocked, actually, especially with like the Delta variant and things like that, that people are like willing to take the risk and, and go for it. And, and in a lot of ways, I think it's great because I like I know I've, I've missed seeing family and friends over the past few years. Something you all mentioned um, that just reminds me of a, a broader trend was just the pet friendliness of hotels. Um, a lot of people adopted pets over the pandemic. <laughs> Vanessa, I know at least you pandemic did. Puppies. I know. Um, so how much of the demand for pet friendliness is, you know, like people not wanting to um, put their pets in shelters or get exposure from someone else um, caring for them versus like the surge of demand in pet ownership? Do you ha I don't know if you all have any insight around that. I, do, I don't have any information on that, but I can say personally speaking in San Francisco, um, even in the local neighborhood, there have been four shelters that have closed like permanently during COVID. So if I can only think of like places that have closed and I'm sure that includes boarding for your pet. So the number of places to even put your pet during if you go on vacation has probably been limited. Um, so that's just another reason that people are, you know, taking their pets on the road. Plus, it's more fun. Like, you want to have your pet with you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it is more fun. <laughs> so yeah. how, and I know that you all started talking about this too, how is the Delta variant causing shifts in the travel marketplace as we're looking ahead to the rest of the year? Yeah, I can weigh in here. So, um, you know, as Stacy mentioned earlier, Vaccines have definitely driven a lot of confidence, and we saw that repeatedly in the data and the research and the performance, you know, over this past summer. Domestic summer travel um, really hit some highs, and, you know, people definitely took to the road, and it sounds like they're planning to do that for the rest of this year. Um, and then came this flurry of concerns and questions over the Delta variant. So in July, we did see travel interest start to back off and wane a little bit. But the most recent numbers, as we've been discussing today, um, are showing a slight rebound. And, you know, interest is starting to percolate here again. I was just reading something this week from Evolve um, Travel Company, and they, they just put out their most recent survey results with the travel forecast for the rest of this year. And they're saying that 32% of travelers are not factoring the Delta variant into their travel plans at all. I, that's a very interesting number to me. And then of those travelers who are actually concerned about it, 46.5% aren't considering canceling their plans because of it until much closer to their trip date. So, you know, people are booking early, right? We've seen that change since 2019 of people booking their holiday trips early and they're just going to kind of hold out and see what happens the rest of the year, which I think is pretty encouraging for travel brands. You know, the COVID numbers are growing. I can't pick up my phone without seeing another story. Um, just today I saw, you know, one in 500 people in the U.S. has died from COVID. That's pretty sobering, but I think a lot rides on you know, vaccination levels as they continue, which those are rising too. 
Um, and a lot rides on how this Delta variant and potential other new mutations of this horrible virus, um, you know, are managed both in the U.S. and abroad. Um, the CDC's do not travel list is changing all the time um, for, for better or for worse, right? You know, it's, it's certainly something to keep a pulse on. Um, and the mask mandates are, are changing, you know, by the hour too. But for travelers, the masks are persisting, right? You can't go through an airport right now without having a mask on. And I think that's going to be here for, you know, the unforeseen future. Um, but because it's such a dynamic issue, I really do think that we're going to continue to see people booking ahead, right, and waiting and seeing, and then also anticipating these last-minute bookings and potentially some cancellations. So on the cancellation side, I think that that's something that travel brands really need to keep in mind. Be open to it. Plan into it as much as you can, right? You know, anticipate that your numbers are going to change at, at the last minute somewhat. Um, and just maximize messaging around that, around your last minute travel, because that's where people's comfort level is. That's what the research is showing us, and that's what the trend is right now. I definitely see that with a lot of my friends with either they are considering going to an event, but they're waiting until the last minute to see how things look before going, or they had already purchased their ticket to like a, a concert and they're specifically you know, going to only open air concerts where they can still go and they can have like a 12 foot radius around uh, themselves away from other people. So they're still going a lot of the time, even when they are concerned about Delta. Yeah, I think that there's been a real surge too in people buying that cancel for any reason insurance. You know, that has certainly mm -hmm. had a boom. Um, and I think that's for events, too. You know, you always get that when you buy a ticket online, Ticketmaster, whoever it might be, you always get the opportunity there to add on that cancellation insurance. And I think that, you know, there's a, there's a lot of that still happening. Stacy, did you want to tag on here? Yeah. And in regards to the Delta variant, um, when it first spiked, like Vanessa was talking about, I think the important thing is we like to segment our business between transient and group. And the important thing was we did start to see some cancellations from the group segment, but transient held strong. And that was good for us to see that they were not afraid to travel. Um, we think that group was really canceling because a lot of companies haven't decided their protocols for meeting yet. You know, they haven't really figured out what does the testing look like when they get together? Do they feel safe meeting at a hotel or a different place? Like, and what happens if someone tests positive? So I think companies are still figuring that out. And because of the variant, they were a little afraid to meet at that point. So we did see a lot of cancellations. Um, uh, all in all, we're anticipating a long road uh, to return for international travel because of all of the bans on travel, because of all of the, you know, U.S., Canada, Europe. Um, but we're starting to see some returns in market. I, I can tell you I was in Fisherman's Wharf a few weekends ago, and the amount of international travelers I saw, I was sitting in a, in a bar and the guy goes, oh, where are you visiting from? And I was like, I'm actually a local. <laughs> um, but it was so good to hear him ask where I was from. And he's like, he's like, it's coming back. It's coming back. And I was just like, that's so great. <laughs> um, but you can just feel it, you know, and I think one of the things that I'm noticing is the, the more strict vaccination places like New York City and San Francisco, where it's kind of like, you can't come here unless you're vaccinated. You have to have your vaccination card. We're starting to notice a little bit more hesitancy around booking in those places. So that's something that we're kind of watching out for. Um, but I think like holidays, we're, we're so excited about the holidays and like Vanessa was saying, Families are talking about gathering and doing like smaller dinners of, you know, eight to 10 people and they want to do it kind of a little bigger, but still small and pay for their whole family since they haven't gotten together. And we're kind of excited and looking forward to that. Very cool. Are there any new travel trends that are emerging or coming up again because of the increased COVID rate due to the Delta variant? Yeah, um, we're starting to see. So we talked about group kind of lingering off when the variant started to spike, but 
we're starting to see in q four so october through december there are a few smaller companies starting to host their executive teams as like a test to see how it goes right so like there's a few bigger companies that are hosting their executive teams at a few of our hotels and i think it's like a test to test their protocols a test to see how the hotels do and to see how social distancing goes and that's pretty exciting to look forward to 2022 and see how that first wave goes and to see that group starting to come back i don't and then and additionally again i don't think it's scaring away the transient travelers the hotels aren't seeing any cancellations around there a little hesitancy around flexibility and making sure that's always there um but then family getting together meeting in in cities that you know maybe you have some family members around the mid-atlantic region and you want to meet in one city and do a huge dinner because you haven't seen each other so we're starting to see some small group leads for that um, maybe a catering event so we're starting to put together some types of like meeting an event small micro um, dinners if you will uh, for those types of things that we're starting to see leads come in for so we're, we're excited about the potential of some kind of holiday gatherings for families and friends and I think that even looking into 2022, it might be the year of the weddings. Everybody coming back <laughs> and having the past. So true, minutes. though. <laughs> so true. Like, I think everybody's wedding pretty much got canceled the last two and a half uh -huh. years. So that might be the year of the weddings. <laughs> Um, and I know, uh, I know Alyssa is going to talk about all of the pent up wedding demand, so I'll turn it over to her. Yeah, weddings, it's definitely the year of weddings. Um, I saw something where in 2021, and I mean, obviously there's things that can alter this, such as the Delta variant and some things that we can't predict, but there was a 30% increase of weddings planned for 2021 versus 2019. Um, and I mean, I've had a ton of weddings in 2019 too. <laughs> so that's quite crazy to see. And I've had some friends that have recently gotten engaged and they said that they are looking at some wedding venues that are three years out from booking. So they wow. have to wait if they want to book at this specific venue for three years. There's just so much pent up demand there. And I know we've been working to just um, you know, just from like a hotel perspective on the room blocks area of that too. Um, specifically, you know, making sure that, yes, if your hotel can host a wedding, that's awesome too, but making sure there's some content there um, on the website to incorporate some of the room blocks and being able to book a block of rooms to support all those weddings that we're gonna see over the next year and a half or so. I mean, maybe even three years if you're waiting that long for your <laughs> venue, I'm not sure. <laughs> some patience required for that one. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. <laughs> I feel like I could have told that trend from my own social media feeds. <laughs> all engagements, weddings, and or puppies. Count and puppies. And puppies. And puppies. <laughs> but also the countdowns to the weddings and oh, the yes. count when with the weddings having been pushed back and mm -hmm. back so much, the countdowns just they just continue <laughs> like indefinitely. Six hundred days. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess on another note, um, I know we talked a lot about like flexibility and what consumers are looking for. Um, something we've seen is big hotel hotel chains such as your Marriotts, your Intercontinental Hotels groups recovering from a search interest perspective a little bit faster than some of the um, home sharing options such as Airbnb and whatnot, just for the fact that they do have those brand standard cleanliness um, policies. So you know what you're to expect when you get to the hotel, you know what um, disinfection they're using and you just have an idea of what to expect there. Um, and also too with the flexible policy, I know Stacy mentioned how users and people are starting to care about that again. Um, so just ensuring that there's um, a brand wide flexible booking policy as well there. Cool. So in the US, um, we've seen the rate of COVID infections definitely be a roller coaster as we're seeing right now um, and what we've seen with previous waves. Um, so with the travel vertical just so intensely impacted by infection rates and public fear and, and local mandates, how are you all thinking more broadly about planning for the future? Is it just like a new normal with wave after wave until we'll just be 
all just kind of living with it? Or do you think the Pope, the public is um, more open to uh, further travel restrictions and shutdowns as, as COVID spikes again? How are you all thinking about that? Well, I don't think anything is going to keep those brides from coming down the aisle now. <laughs> but, um, seriously, I, you know, having lived in this both as, you know, my personal life and my professional life working with, um, you know, travel companies on a daily basis, I really feel like unless some new variant comes into the picture that is not either A, you know, treatable or preventable uh, through the vaccines or B, um, guarded against by masks, I just Mm -hmm. don't see us going back to the same place we were back in 2020 where nobody could leave their house. Um, And I, you know, I know that travel brands would be devastated. They don't want that. And I really get the growing sense from the public um, that they're not going to go back to that. Um, They don't want that either. And the optimist in me says we're not going back there. Um, But, you know, I really, I don't think that that is in our future unless something really dramatic happens or the government, of course, you know, mandates it again. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we have a lot more data on COVID than we did, like, March of 2020. Like, we have a full, like, year and a half's worth of data to help give some substance to the changes that we're making and and to guide us. Yeah, I agree. I mean, hindsight, um, not necessarily 2020. (laughs) I shouldn't have said 2020. (laughs) (laughs) Very punny, Vanessa, very punny. (laughs) No, it's it's perfect. It's it's maybe the only time in history you could ever really use that perfectly. (laughs) Yeah. I, I, you know, I agree with you, Andrea. I think that, um, you know, we've learned a lot along the way. um, And I think we still have a ways to go, but um, we're not starting from scratch where we were at the beginning of this, you know, this adventure. Exactly. Alyssa, what do you think? I'm curious. Yeah, I guess just from planning for the future, I know we talked about this a little bit in our last episode too, and I don't think too much has changed in that sense. It's just for the fact that to stay nimble. I mean, I know we talked about this already too, but every day something changes. I mean, every local government, every state is dealing with things a little bit differently. Um, So it's important that your guests um, that are traveling have an idea of what to expect when they do get to your hotel or they do get on the airplane. So just staying on top of it and ensuring that your marketing is reflecting what's going on and also pivoting as needed. Um, There's a lot changing and um, it's important to stay sensitive within your marketing and your messaging just to align with the changes that are happening daily. Um, And that's the fun of digital. I mean, we're able to change things super quickly. You can change your ads to target what's going on. You can update your social media to reflect Um, the types of travel that we've talked about, like pet friendly to align with some of those messaging um, that people are interested in traveling and also just to let your guests know what to expect too. So um, kind of the fun of digital. And uh, I know it's pretty vague just to stay on top of the news, but we can't predict what the future will hold here. (laughs) Definitely. And kind of bridging off of that, how should marketers and travel uh, hospitality experts be thinking about and preparing for holidays this year compared to previous holidays? Like messaging, we've talked about being flexible, but what other um, what are areas can they can they be thinking about? Believe it or not, people are fatigued and just want to be out. And I know it sounds a little strange given all of the you know antibacterial uh, soaps that we've used throughout the year, but like people kind of want the human touch again. Like they want the connection. They want to be face to face with people and they're going to be traveling this holiday season. It might not look like what it always has, you know, pre 2020, but um, they're going to be out. They're going to be cautious, but they're going to be traveling. People haven't seen their families. And I think this holiday season, they're going to be throwing in five celebrations in one. Uh, birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. They don't want to miss out on another year together. Um, And we are just going to be providing, you know, hotels and airlines and everyone just needs to be providing 
what they're going to be doing to keep them safe what are the protocols what are the flexibility options and all of that to let guests know and customers know that they can be traveling and they should be getting together with their families and that we have the proper access in place outdoors and the flexibility to allow them to do that five holidays in one sounds like my kind of party <laughs> yes. so I'm, I'm really yes. i'm really hoping that's what my parents are planning on this year <laughs> Well, that's a wrap for this year. Um, we will definitely have to reconvene and talk about 2022 at some point. Um, it's been an interesting ride so far, and it's definitely hard to predict what next year will hold. And that's it for this episode of Digital Marketing Musings. Huge thanks to our guests, Vanessa, Alyssa, and Stacy, for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Awesome. Well, stay in touch and let us know what you want to hear about next by emailing us at digitalmarketingmusings at merkleinc.com. Also, if you have not already, please hit that subscribe button and rate and review us. It helps others find our show. Please be sure to tell a friend about it as well. Until next time, I'm Andrea McCartney. And I'm Gaia Reed. Bye.